Sean, I think there were too many uh, points there to me for me to remember them all, but let's give it a shot. Um, about the pre-67 borders being um, indefensible, um, it's not true that all military leaders um, and military experts agree on that. I can give you the names of some um, great military uh, leaders who don't agree uh, that that's the case. Um, for example, um, Mati Pele, and for example, Mayor Pa'il. Um, there are two, among others, who are not so convinced, as uh, you said, that those borders are indefensible. Moreover, um, I'm not arguing that Israel relinquish uh, the conquered territories of the West Bank uh, unilaterally or fast. Only for the moment I'm advocating that Israel make proclamations and uh, state its uh, intentions very publicly to the Arab states and especially to the Palestinian people that within the context of peace we are prepared excuse me we are prepared to relinquish the lands after all when we went to war in 67 we didn't go to war in order to aggrandize our territory we're not an expansionist people at least uh, not unless we want to ape other peoples uh, we're a peace loving people and so we hold on to these territories uh, Sean only as a surety for peace and for no other reason, and that within the context of peace, we will return them. And furthermore, Sean, within the context of peace, there will be no need to really defend our borders. So indefensible or not, that becomes um, nothing more than uh, academic nicety. And, and uh, excuse me, Sean, it's my turn again now. Uh, and so um, uh, whether it's defensible or not is immaterial once we have normalcy, normal relations, and peace. Um, you said I was naive, so let me um, weave the whole thing for you, and then you can really call me naive. The kind of thing that I'm dream dreaming of, Sean, and that I want to see played out uh, in our day, is that there will exist the, relation the kind of relationship uh, that the United States has with Canada between Israel and the Arab states, and Israel and, and, Israel and Palestine. Now, some of you are laughing. Um, it's not clear to me whether you're laughing because you don't want something like that. I can't imagine that you wouldn't want it. I mean, God, what's the implication of that? Um, so surely you must want it. And if you want it, then surely you must want to strive for it and struggle for it. Um, so surely it's not out of a lack of want, but you must think that uh, it simply isn't in the cards that it's um, um, naive to think that if there were Palestine on the West Bank and in the Gaza Strip, uh, sharing Jerusalem as a dual capital, then there could not be uh, an Israel, that they would wipe us out. But Sean, there are a couple of other factors that uh, I would ask you to consider. And I would, add, I would also ask those of you who joined Sean in laughing, um, you might also consider. For one, once the Palestinian people have a state of their own, then, for the first time, really for the first time, they'll have something to lose. Now the PLO has nothing to lose. Nothing at all. Give them a state, and they will have something to lose. And a state that will clearly be much weaker than our state, because we're not going to relinquish our power, our strength, we're not going to disarm. Why, we would even insist, I would think, in the negotiating process, that Palestine not have an army for however many years, five years, ten years, whatever, and that um, weaponry from the Soviet Union or from other uh, imperialist states, including this one, uh, not be permitted uh, there, and eventually not be permitted in Israel as well, but that's another matter. Um, so uh, that state might have a police force, of course, but not an army. Um, will the Palestinians agree to that? I don't know, any more than you know, any more than um, any Israeli leader knows. Should we make such attempts? Of course we should. If we want territories and not peace, then no, we shouldn't make such attempts. But if we're really concerned about the security of Israel and the survival of Israel as a Jewish state, then of course we, we must be making such attempts and such overtures. Of course we must be trying to solve this thing politically by taking creative initiatives toward the Palestinians, even toward the PLO, Sean we should be offering to recognize the PLO. We should be offering to invite their... We should be offering to invite their leaders to Jerusalem to address the Knesset. Not unilaterally, but with the precondition 
that they renounce terror and recognize us as a Jewish state. But there's also more, Sean, that's going on here. Uh, not only will they then have something to lose for the first time, but they'll be preoccupied with the nuts and bolts of statehood for the first time, which we know uh, will uh, put on their shoulders certain other kinds of responsibilities than they now have. And finally, I would point out to you, Sean, that, um, and to others who smirk, that um, if we look around the world, we will easily see many leaders who are now uh, respectable or quasi-respectable uh, and who, were, who are erstwhile terrorists, who were once upon a time terrorists, including in our beloved Israel. Um, but what happens over time? What happens over time, maybe not in all cases, but in, in a sufficient number of these cases, what happens over time is that once legitimacy is conferred, why then certain other things are set in motion, including responsibility, respectability, and um, that changes people, and that changes movements, and that even changes terrorist groups. Um, and so now, if I were arguing that we do something of a unilateral or fast nature, then I would understand why some of you laugh or snicker or hiss or boo. But no such thing is being um, suggested, certainly not by me. What I'm suggesting is the only way for real peace and real normalcy, if that's what we want. We can't have both the territories and that. I'm going to turn the same question over to Rabbi Kahana. I think that for the sake of truth and accuracy, there are no great generals. There's not one great general that has said what you were just told, that the borders of 67 can be supported, defended. Two people's names were mentioned. Mayor Pai was never a general. I didn't say he was. You said many great generals, and then you said Peladin Pai. So I assume that within that context, he was a general. He wasn't a general. He was a politician and a leftist. Mati Peled. Mati Peled was head of the quartermaster corps of Tsahal. An important job, but hardly a great general. <laughs> he is also today a member of Knesset of the pro Ashaf PLO party. I think that those of you who heard these words weren't born, or if you were, you were much too young to recall the three weeks that preceded the Six Day War. If you had been alive then, or been old enough to remember that terror, as Jews throughout the world thought, my God, Israel is going under, not another. Holocaust. Jews gave money here as if we're going out of, out of style, out of a terrible fear, another two and a half million Jews then. Israel struck the first blow, thank God. That's what saved them. Stand on a mountaintop in Samaria and you can see the lights of the cities of Israel on the coast. You want to go back to that? They may, if we make this offer to them, they've gotten clever. They may agree, and we'll have given them land for a piece of paper. How many people who win five wars give up land? They may become a responsible people once they get power. That's what they said about Hitler. That's what they said about Hitler. Of course, now he's raving and he's talking. And he's, give him power and he'll become a responsible person. And Germany, too, was bound by a treaty that they could not have an army. He tore it up and the world did nothing. What will the Israelis do if there is a Palestinian state 
which invites Russian troops in. No question that Israel will immediately march in and fight the Russians. I find it an incredible thing. Let's invite the PLO. We're angry at Ronald Reagan for not remembering what the Nazis did. How dare we forget what the PLO has done and would do tomorrow? I want peace at least as much as Rabbi Axelrod does because I don't live in Massachusetts. I want peace because my, because my children serve in the army and I serve in the army. Of course I want peace. Who doesn't want peace? But there's a tremendous difference between wanting something and getting it. My grandson thinks that if you want something, you get it. When he reaches the age of five, I hope that he'll understand that that's not how the world works. <laughs> of course I want peace, but I remember the reality of the Arab-Jewish struggle. In 1947, they could have had a state called Palestine. All they had to do was agree to a partition plan which would have created an absurd little Jewish state which couldn't have existed. And they said no to that. I remember that. And I remember what they did before there was a Jewish state. The hundreds of Jews slaughtered in what was then Palestine. And why do we have such contempt for the Arabs? There's not one Arab refugee not one Palestinian in Lebanon who comes from the West Bank or from Gaza. You know where they come from? They come from the Galilee. They come from Haifa. They don't want to return to Shechem because they never came from Shechem. They want to return to Nazareth. That's where they were born. Or to Haifa. That's where they were born. Why do we have such contempt for them? I respect the as a temporary step. And then you know what they'll demand? The implementation of all the UN plans. The UN resolved in 1947 to establish a state within certain borders. The PLO will demand, after they have their state within the 67 borders, that Israel conform to the resolution of 1947 and return Jaffa, or at least allow all the refugees to go back. And you know who will be the first of the Jewish moralists to get up and say, Yosha, it's only right, it's only right. You know who will be among the first. Because it's only right to let them go back, because after all, it's not right to let them stay in, in camps when they came from Jaffa, and Rom, and Lut, and Ashkelon, and Beersheba. No. Not one inch, not one inch back to the north.